In this video, I will be taking a thrifted shelf that I will be using a salt wash paint technique to it. So follow along and see how this turns out. And if you like this video or any of my content, please consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up and share my videos. Every little bit does help my channel to grow and for YouTube to notice it just a little bit more. So in this video, I will be showing how I took this old red wood shelf from the thrift store. And I did have some help from my hubby who removed those wood pieces that were at the front. They're like a wood trim. I also gave this a little bit of a sanding as much as I could in between each of those um, shelves. And once I sanded it down enough, I went ahead and took some of this old school DIY paint and gave that a good base coat. It's up to you if you want to do one or two coats. I will be putting many layers of paints on here, so it really doesn't matter if um, you get full coverage on the first um, paint that you use. So making a paste using some coarse salt and plaster of Paris, um, I made a salt wash that I um, followed from another uh, content creator. And there are other tutorials out there if you would like to just um, search up ways to create your own um, salt wash. Um, they also have salt wash finish that you can purchase that's already pre-made. But it is uh, very simple to make, so um, it's worth it just to go ahead and DIY it yourself. So taking some of this old 57 DIY paint color, I used that as my first layer and then mixed in some of that salt wash finish that I created adding just enough to create the texture and the thickness and consistency that I was looking for. Now remember you can add as little or more as you need to create the texture that you are looking for and the more coarse um, the more authentic this looks as far as making it look really old and chippy so I personally like that look myself. So for the second layer of paint I'm using mint chip in this very light green color, also by DIY. Well, technically, I don't know if you would consider this a third layer of paint since the base coat was in that old school, but I'm only considering this a second because it's the one with the actual salt wash on it. So keep in mind when doing this technique, um, the base coat that you paint your product in um, will be what will come up later on when you start doing your sanding. Now each of these layers will slowly be revealed uh, when you do the finish, um, the sanding at the end, because uh, depending on how, how far you go with the sanding, whether you go really deep to the very first base coat, or if you go to just the second layer of paint or the third, that's the color that it's going to reveal when you sand this piece down. You'll see it at the end exactly what I'm talking about. For this next um, layer of paint, I'm using some of this cake batter color. Again, uh, this is a DIY paint. So make sure that you're using a pouncing or stippling motion. You never want to rub or uh, brush your brush back and forth. Um, you want to create more of a that textured um, overall look. So you'll want to make sure that when you put your paint down to your shelf that you sort of dab it on in areas that you would like for it to appear later on. So I kind of went crazy with um, the paint as far as um, adding it to almost every square inch of the shelf. If you wanted to add less of the color, you can definitely minimize it to just a couple colors. Or if you wanted um, less of the contrast, you can also just uh, spread the paint um, farther apart throughout this piece. You don't have to have like each of the paint colors side by side as I did here. But at the end of it all, it did come out pretty good um, for my first uh, try at this salt wash uh, technique. I'm very pleased with the outcome, but stick around to the end to see how it turns out. So as you see here, I decided to take another um, color which is sandstone and then I went ahead and just did the same thing adding that salt wash finish 
And once all the layers were dry, I took a scraping tool. This is from the Dollar Tree. And you'll want to scrape off um, most of that coarse, chunky layer of paint that you have. And that's from where the salt, um, from the salt wash finish might have accumulated or sat. And after you do the um, scraping method, you'll want to take a sander. And here I took my uh, palm sander and just sanded it down a bit to give it a smooth finish. So some of these areas were very um, tight areas and it was a little challenging to get my sander into those areas. So I did as much as I could with that tool that I have. But here I did take a sanding block um, where I was able to get into it, those shelves a little bit more easily and just sanded it down as needed. And then taking a towel, a microfiber towel, just went ahead and wiped off the dust. So my last layer of paint will be this chalk color in plaster by Waverly. I wanted this to be the ultimate last color and the color that you'll see the most at the end of this project. So also keep in mind that when you are using a top coat for your project, um, whatever you use as your last top coat color is the one that's going to primarily be seen when you're done. At least in my situation. Had I sanded this down um, more, you know, closer to the base of the, the base color, uh, I might have taken off more of that plaster color, but I didn't sand down too aggressively. I just did it enough to where I had colors coming through here and there. And um, I even got as far as uh, the base color, which was the original color this came in, the finish. It's the red paint, as you can see right there in that corner, um, which I do like. And I'm not a big fan of decorating in red, but when it pops out a little bit here and there and it's more of that barn wood red, um, I don't mind it too much. So for the sides, I wanted to go with a different technique. I decided to do a crackle finish because um, originally I wasn't sure if I wanted the sides to match the middle part by giving it the salt wash finish, but I decided to go with a different um, technique and I used some Elmer's school glue. You can use any brand um, and paint over your, your, um, your shelf or whatever product that you're painting. Then while the glue is wet, you'll want to go ahead and top coat it. And here I'm using that plaster chalk paint as, again, like I did with the whole entire piece. And right before your eyes, as the paint dries, you can see the crackles start to appear. I think this pretty fun, this is pretty fun watching this process happen. And um, since I wanted to get to the other side of the shelf, I decided to speed up the drying process using a heat gun. Um, but if you want to wait and let it dry naturally, you can do that. So as you can see, the cracks are becoming more apparent. So for this side, um, the cracks appeared more on the fine side since I went a little bit thin with the glue. Now, remember that when, when and if you decide to use this crackle technique, um, you'll get bigger cracks if you use a thicker amount of glue, like a more glue, like more concentrated amount without overspreading it. Um, you'll see that your cracks are a lot bigger, they're wider. You'll see this in the other side right here. So on this side, I decided to go heavy handed with the wood glue or not the wood glue, the Elmer's school glue. And as you can see right before your eyes, the cracks are coming up larger than it did on the other side. Now I like either look. Um, this side is uh, just more obvious with the cracks and everything and the other side was um, more subtle. Now there's a happy medium like if you decided you didn't want the whole thing crackled you can also just do the edges and that would be fine as well. So that is what it looks like after the crackle finish. Moving back to the shelving, um, I decided to use some of this molding 
it's a very flexible molding um it's called effects i'm not sure exactly where else you can purchase this but if you don't have access to this um, particular brand uh, you can certainly make this if you have iod molds So if you have IOD molds, you can definitely make your own using some air dry clay or even resin. But I wanted to give this one a shot. I just saw it one day and I just picked it up. So here it is. I just used some tight bond, quick and thick glue. I tried to clamp it down, but that wasn't working out too well because as I press on one side, the other side lifted. So instead, off camera, I, I decided to stack some books on top of it instead. And then I would shift the books around just for um, it to evenly lay flat. So when I saw that one side was starting to dry um, and lay flat, I would move the books over to the other side of it and do the same thing and so on and so forth. Once I let that dry and everything was adhered securely, I took the same plaster chalk paint and just painted over that molding. And the last step I did was added a top coat using polycrylic. And I just gave this a couple of good coats all around inside and on the sides. Sped it up with my heating tool or heat gun. And that about does it for this makeover. This is a thrift makeover. And it just goes to show you what you can do with a little paint. I just took this old red shelf. That was not my style whatsoever. Sanded it down, gave it some good coats of paint. And this is the outcome. I love how it came out. Super rustic, very shabby chic. You could style it with paints in your craft room, which I will probably be doing, or you can use it for any part of your house to decorate with, adding little tchotchkes here and there, or collectibles. And I really love how this looks, and I love the salt wash technique. I will definitely try this again. This again was my first time trying it, and I must say it was rather easy. A little intimidating at first because I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out, but you just got to stick with the process to the end and believe that it will turn out okay. So hopefully I inspired you to try this technique. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.